Hey guys, I hope you had fun learning about all the experiments which led us to discovery of the first subatomic particle, the electron. We learned that atom is made of negatively charged electrons. But does that mean that atom is negatively charged? Obviously no. We know that atom is in fact electrically neutral. So to counterbalance the negative charge of electron, there must be something inside the atom which is positively charged. How do you think scientists would have found out? Well, E. Goldstein was the first person who found out these positively charged particles, which eventually led to discovery of protons. Now, since negatively charged particles were originating from the negative electrode, which is cathode, where do you think these positively charged particles will come from? Well, these positively charged particles will originate from the positive electrode, which is anode. Now, since these particles would originate from the anode, they must be visible behind the cathode. To see this clearly, Goldstein used a perforated cathode. Now, a perforated cathode is simply a cathode with holes in it. He modified the tube by adding another gas chamber and placing this perforated cathode in the middle of it. Now, when he turned on the power, he saw this beautiful pinkish glow which was coming from the anode and which was visible behind the cathode. He saw that these rays were passing through the holes in the cathode. He compared this to a rays passing through the canals. And that's why he called these rays as canal rays. And many scientists who named cathode rays because they were coming from the cathode, similarly, they named these rays as anode rays. So now that we have found these new type of rays which are anode rays, we need to find out whether their properties are same or different from the cathode rays. So even though scientists had an idea that these rays are made of positively charged particles, they still had to verify that. So to verify that, they passed these rays through two charged plates and found that these rays were attracted towards the negatively charged plate. That clearly tells us that these rays are made of positively charged particles. Now, since these anode rays are probably made of particles, let's see what happened when they place the paddle wheel in their path. As expected, the paddle wheel started spinning, suggesting that these anode rays are made of particles which have mass and velocity. So now, if you remember from the previous video, that when we brought a magnet close to the cathode rays, they were bent downward because they were negatively charged. So what do you think will happen when you bring a magnet close to these positively charged rays? Well, you are right. These rays will bend upward because the direction in which rays will deflect depends upon the nature of the charge. Now, if you notice carefully, you will see that the deflection in case of anode rays is way less than compared to the cathode rays. But why is that? Well, I want to remind you that we learned in our ball and wind example that the effect of a perpendicular force on a moving particle in a straight line is always less in case of heavier object than compared to the lighter object. So what does that tell us about anode rays? That tells us that even though we are using the magnet of the same strength in both the cases, the reflection in the case of anode rays is less because anode rays must be made of a particle which is heavier than the particles in the cathode rays. Now, to understand the nature of these charged particles, scientists changed the gas inside the tube and checked if the reflection would change. But they found something interesting. They found that the reflection changed every time they changed the gas. They saw that reflection in the case of heavier gas was less and deflection in the case of lighter gas was more. This clearly tells us that the particles coming from the heavier gas had more mass and the particles coming from the lighter gas had less mass. So now, can you guess what are these positively charged particles? Well, these are positively charged atoms. But shouldn't atom be neutral? Well, scientists realized when they applied the strong electrical force, electrons came out of the atom and what was left behind was positively charged particles. These positively charged particles are nothing but ions created when electrons are removed from the atoms, which was seen as anode rays. After the discovery of the subatomic particles, 
scientists knew that atom is made of two entities, one which is positive, the other which is negative. But they wanted to know how are these particles arranged inside an atom? Does the answer lie in the structure of atom? We will see in the next video. Until then, stay tuned. So let's summarize all the things that we have learned today. We saw when Goldstein used a perforated cathode, he saw positively charged particles which are originating from the anode, which he called them as canal rays, which were also known as anode rays. The behavior of these particles in the presence of an electrical and the magnetic field was opposite to what was observed in the case of electrons or cathode rays. Unlike cathode rays, the mass of the positively charged particles depend upon the gas inside the tube. Scientists realized that these positively charged particles were nothing but positively charged gaseous ions.